Thanks so much for joining us today. Our team is very proud to welcome our Afghan friends to Fort McCoy. We have guests here who have served and sacrificed with us, who helped us, many here previously wounded in combat. We have a large number. We have a large number of pregnant women with us, a large number of college women, and almost half of our population here are wonderfully vibrant and beautiful children. We have many prominent members of Afghan society here, all hopeful for a better future. Well, this is the first time we're welcoming media to Fort McCoy since the installation was selected to support Operation Allies Welcome. I am confident that it will not be the last time. For our out-of-town guests, you may not realize that Fort McCoy is the only U.S. Army installation in the state of Wisconsin. This 60,000-acre fort supports year-round training for the total force and now, with a capacity of 13,000, supports the largest Afghan evacuee population in the United States. As Task Force Commander, I oversee the City of Afghan Guests and our Department of Defense support to the Department of Homeland Security-led mission here. Specifically, I oversee the temporary housing and care, including the provision of culturally appropriated meals, medical services, and other daily needs of our approximately 12,600 guests. This initiative follows through on America's commitment to Afghan personnel who helped us and provides them essential support at a secure location where they and their families can complete the process to safely resettle. In a moment, I'll turn things over to Ms. Angie Salazar, our lead for the Department of Homeland Security here. She'll discuss her department's role in the process leading to the resettlement of our Afghan guests. Ms. Salazar will be followed by Mr. Sky Justice, our lead for the Department of State here, and then Major General Daryl Guthrie, uh, our lead for the Department of Defense here. Major General Guthrie also serves as the senior mission commander here, overseeing not only Fort McCoy and its training mission, but also our task force's support to this mission. Before I do, I want to encourage you to take in your experience today and to form your own impressions of what you witness. Some initial context. This is a very safe community. Crime rates are extremely low for a city of this size, with very few isolated incidents that were very quickly dealt with by the appropriate authorities and are being adjudicated now. We have a very robust police presence, rehearsed response plans if needed, and maintain a substantive security posture here 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Our Afghan friends are expected to abide by the laws of the United States and the overwhelming majority continue to do so. They are considerate neighbors and we all feel very safe here at Fort McCoy. Again, they've sacrificed a lot to be here and they've demonstrated a commitment to further contributing to our society. The Afghan population here is healthy. Task Force McCoy continues to provide medical care to include vaccinations and continues to monitor the health of the population through testing. Over 45,000 vaccinations have been provided to support the health and well-being of the community. 24-hour acute and routine health care is provided here. Fewer are going to sick call every day. Pharmacy services are open. We remain in close coordination with local hospitals. We're feeding over 40,000 meals at four dining facilities every day here. We have 24-hour grab-and-go food facilities in our communities, and our Afghan friends are doing very well. Quality of life at Fort McCoy is very good. We have designated mayors in each community. We have very vibrant community care centers, which you'll see today. Recreation areas like this one behind us throughout. Every neighborhood has Wi-Fi. Every building that our Afghan friends are staying in is heated, has hot water and private shower and bathroom areas. Areas are clean daily and our Afghan friends are taking very good care of their buildings. They've been issued blankets and we've received very generous donations from the state of Wisconsin and from throughout the United States to include winter clothing, which you'll see today. I walk this footprint every day and every day I see something new. 
English classes taught by Afghan professors, women and children's centers, incredible work by our interagency partners, swings built by Afghan kids, exercise classes, families out walking, soccer games, sidewalk drawings, movie nights, and town hall meetings. I think that you will be surprised. I know that I am every day. And with that, I'm very proud to introduce Miss Angie Salazar. Good morning. My name is Angie Salazar. I am the federal coordinator for Operation Allies Welcome at Fort McCoy. We are grateful for the warm welcome from the people of Wisconsin that have extended to us and the Afghan evacuees in recent weeks. As many of you already know, Fort McCoy plays a crucial role in the whole of government effort to support vulnerable Afghans, including those who worked alongside of us in Afghanistan as they safely resettle in the United States. Before their arrival to Fort McCoy, these individuals were screened and vetted by intelligence, law enforcement, and counterterrorism professionals from across the U.S. government. Our guests at Fort McCoy are currently completing immigration paperwork, including employment authorizations and health screenings to prepare them for their resettlement in the United States. With the Department of Homeland Security in the lead, the success of our mission relies on the teamwork which you will see on display today with my counterparts from uh, the Department of Def Defense and, and the Department of State. The teamwork, effort, and focus on resettlement of our Afghan guests is the top priority of all our interagency partners here and is the cornerstone of everything we do. I would like to mention the work of our non-governmental and faith-based organizations. In addition to our interagency partners, the cooperation of various NGOs to support the work here at Fort McCoy to prepare our Afghan guests for resettlement has been outstanding. There are really too many to mention, but suffice it to say, the support from the community has been truly humbling. Additionally, I would like to express my appreciation to the entire team at McCoy who has been working around the clock to support this mission. And with that, I'll turn it over to Mr. Sky Justice, who is our Department of State lead here at Fort McCoy. Good morning. <clears throat> Good morning, everyone. My name is Sky Justice, and as Angie just shared, I'm the State Department team lead at Fort McCoy. It's a pleasure to speak with you all today. I'd like to begin with a few words about who is here at Fort McCoy. The majority of the nearly 13,000 Afghan guests at Fort McCoy worked directly with the United States in Afghanistan across military, diplomatic, and development efforts, or are the family members of someone who did. Thousands more of our guests are journalists, human rights advocates, or aid workers, people whose careers put them at risk. Many more are the family members of American citizens and green card holders. These individuals represent many elements of Afghan society. There are eminent persons here at Fort McCoy. Senior officials from the Afghan government and military and from the United Nations. But there are also people from across Afghanistan who worked in many different roles. We recently met a gentleman who was a cook at a U.S. military outpost in a remote corner of Afghanistan. As someone from a tightly knit community in a rural area, his service with the United States made him highly identifiable and at risk of persecution from those who opposed our efforts. One of the things that has touched me in working with this community is the way that individuals who have experienced trauma and who have had such a difficult journey to the United States are reaching out to serve others here. We've had women who are university students and therefore at risk in Afghanistan who volunteer to teach English classes. We've had women who have families at Fort McCoy who've organized themselves to assist with reception. And our military linguists, some of whom have family members still in Afghanistan, are working around the clock to support this operation. The State Department's primary role here 
is to coordinate the resettlement of Afghan families to communities across the United States. This will happen through the U.S. Refugee Admissions Program and the Afghan Placement and Assistance Program. We're working with our interagency partners to ensure that all of our Afghan guests complete the necessary immigration processing and medical screening as quickly as possible. And we will then help them to resettle to communities across our country. All Afghan families are eligible for resettlement. And at Fort McCoy, we're now at a position where we expect to begin resettling larger numbers of people. So how does this work? The State Department works with nine resettlement agencies that have affiliates in communities across the nation. We work with state and local officials and community organizations, churches, charities, civic groups, who provide assistance directly to families in their new homes. Each family will be assigned a sponsor who can assist them in their new homes as they begin this next chapter in their lives. At the local level, families will receive support when they arrive at the airport, support in finding a place to live and furnishing that home, assistance finding a place where they can shop for groceries, learn how to use local public transit, and enroll their children in school. They'll also be assisted in finding jobs. The outpouring of support from Americans seeking to help is incredible. Local resettlement agencies and community groups are harnessing the goodwill of the American people as these Afghan families begin their new lives here. This work is an expression of our values as a nation that provides refuge to those in need. We encourage everyone interested in contributing to this effort to check out the new website, welcome.us. Welcome.us is a public-private partnership that provides information on the many opportunities to be involved in welcoming Afghans and helping them begin their new lives. Individuals, small businesses, charitable organizations, and all kinds of Americans are already joining this national effort to support these Afghan families, and we invite you to join us. Thank you very much, and it's my pleasure to introduce Major, Major General Daryl Guthrie. So first of all, welcome to beautiful Fort McCoy, the home of Task Force McCoy. So Task Force McCoy is the Department of Defense's contribution to Operation Allies Welcome. It exists to support the Department of Homeland Security in its role as the lead federal agency and to assist our other interagency partners in the resettlement of Afghan evacuees and to do it as safely, humanely, and expeditiously as possible. Furthermore, we treat everyone here with the highest degree of dignity and respect. In partnership with the interagency, we support the Afghan evacuees as they move through the immigration process. The unity of effort demonstrated moment by moment by and between the interagency is exceptional. I'm honored to be part of this team and at this moment in our nation's history. As you walk the neighborhoods today, you'll have the opportunity to see firsthand some of the more than 1,500 soldiers supporting our Afghan guests. These soldiers are from 11 units from seven different installations. The cohesion, positive attitude, and care these young soldiers are demonstrating every day to execute the mission and welcome our Afghan guests is truly amazing. This is a national priority and follows through on America's commitment to the Afghans who have supported the United States. We are providing them essential support at locations like Fort McCoy where they and their families can fin finalize their immigration processing safely. The Department of Defense and supportive Department of Homeland Security the State Department and other members of the interagency team uh, is proud to make the accommodations and services you will see today available to all our Afghan guests. Operation Allies Welcome requires us to provide a safe and secure environment so that our guests can resettle. We do this here by housing, assisting in processing, and caring for our guests. 
We also do this to repay in a small way those who supported our soldiers and other members of the interagency over the past 20 years in Afghanistan. In sum, Task Force McCoy is doing the right thing, the right way, for the right reasons here, and I could not be more proud of each and every one of them. A few words about our Afghan guests. Last week, we completed a mass vaccination operation of our Afghan guests for measles, mumps, rubella, chicken pox, polio, and COVID-19. In a period of five days, the team of soldiers and contract medical per personnel vaccinated more than 12,000 evacuees. And I think that's really an incredible feat. We did this as a public health imperative to protect the American people upon resettlement of our Afghan guests and to protect our Afghan guests. The level of cooperation from our Afghan guests has been truly incredible. As you'll see for yourself today, they too are focused on their mission of resettlement within the United States. But while they are here, they are doing it with grace, humility, and appreciation. And that has been very impressive to witness firsthand. During your visit today, you'll have the opportunity to talk to my leadership team and the soldiers supporting Task Force McCoy. Ask them questions. I think you'll be impressed with their insights. Finally, I hope you observe the smiling faces of the children, the care being demonstrated for our guests who left their homes in many cases with only the clothes on their back, and the appreciation that they show of our response. I want to thank you again for being here today. It's important that America see and hear this story. Hello, I am Colonel Michael Poss, Garrison Commander of Fort McCoy, and thank you for visiting today. Fort McCoy features a professional and dedicated workforce of soldiers, civilians, employees, and contractors who pull together to provide award-winning customer service to the more than 120,000 people who train here annually with our outstanding facilities. Our workforce treats all guests with dignity and respect. I would like to thank each one of our team members for their incredible support and professionalism. I would also like to thank our local communities of Sparta, Toma, Black River Falls, and La Crosse, plus the people of Monroe, Jackson, and La Crosse counties for their continued support. The majority of our workforce lives in these communities and our children attend school there. These are our friends, family, coworkers, and neighbors. We have recently reconnected with many of these in the community through active engagement with local community leadership. These strengthened relationships have been crucial to the success as you see here today. Local donations through the American Red Cross and the Salvation Army, in addition to Team Rubicon, as you've seen, and the Sparta Armory, have been inspiring and an indication of the amazing generosity of the residents of our region. We encourage people to continue following our Fort McCoy Facebook page for ongoing updates on how to support our soldiers and guests. Fort McCoy's police department is professional and dedicated to working closely with other federal law enforcement agencies who have joined the team to, prov to provide security and safety for our workforce and guests. Thank you, Fort McCoy police and the assigned military police. Our fire and emergency services and dispatch professionals are working hand in hand with the medical teams here, supporting the care and movement of our guests to local hospitals for follow-on care as needed. Task Force McCoy's medical team works to take care of as many situations as possible right here on Fort McCoy. But as you've seen and heard, there are a few times when our guests require evacuation to a higher level of care. So on that note, I would also like to thank our amazing partners from Mayo, Gunderson, UW, Black River Falls, and Toma Health Systems for supporting this effort. We could not have done this without your support and willingness to treat each of the guests who needed a little extra care for emergency or chronic health conditions. Executing this mission 
Fort McCoy continues to demonstrate our value to the Department of Defense and the American public. Just like we have done with mobilization training over the past few decades, or the recent mission to assist the Navy with temporary facilities right here for their basic training. Team McCoy is dedicated and professional. When this current mission ends, Fort McCoy will stand ready to serve again.